sound of the soft tube modular, which is right here on the screen behind me. I posted a little review uh, preview a couple of, well, last week sometime that was basically asking for questions on that. And I thank you for those questions. One of the questions was indeed, uh, would it do the similar sort of riff that I did on the uh, Pittsburgh Modular SV1 Lifeforms uh, hardware modular? And that I think is testament to the fact that it actually does. That was just going through the uh, Valhalla reverb. So Softube Modular is a, a, a software emulation of a Eurorack environment. Uh, it's got modules from Dopefer. It's also got additional modules you can buy from uh, Intelligel and also uh, Heartbeat's own uh, Softube's own Heartbeat drum modules. But as it comes, it does come with a whole bunch of modules that allow you to build a pretty powerful modular system. The grayed out ones are the ones that you would be buying as additional modules. I've already got the Intelligel licenses here. Uh, more information about the prices of those later. But to start with, we've got a dope for VCO, a dope for VCF, dual VCA, ADSR, LFO, and a noise and random generator. These have been modeled with, you know, with the cooperation of Dopefa basically. So they've been built to their specification and to with, you know, in conjunction with Softube to make something that actually sounds a lot like the original. Now I don't have these originals here, so I can't say it sounds exactly like this, but they do have a good basic sound quality to them. Additionally, we've got a whole bunch of uh, utility modules down here, which are the ones that you know most modular you're going to need. You're going to have uh, sine oscillator, envelope follower, multiples, offsets, quad offsets, sample and hold, slew limiter, clock divider, logic tool, switch one to four, all these things. But we've also got a bunch of sequences and uh, trigger sequences. And up here, there are the DAW MIDI interfacing. So uh, we've got a clock output which runs off the DAW sync, so various beat divisions, a MIDI to CV controller, or a quad. MIDI to CV controller if you want to do poly voices, MIDI to trigger for just triggering sounds, and a little basic delay. Additionally, we've got these other modules down here which are performance panels, which allow you to create these kind of custom looks and you can map the controls of this as one-to-one -to, -one to the various uh, modules here. So we should probably just take a listen to a basic voice before we get anywhere else. So let's just check out, this is a simple patch just remove this. I should also point out before I do that, actually, that what I'm doing is I'm running this in uh, on a MacBook Pro 15-inch, uh, uh, which is probably 2013, 2014, and it's uh, i7 2.4 gigahertz with 16 gigs of RAM. And it does require quite a lot of CPU to, to power this, particularly at lower latencies. Um, I should also point out, if you look at the monitor here, I can see the whole interface on here, but this is not at native resolution. I've had to force this into 1080 because I'm running an external monitor here. If I was to run this at native resolution, the interface does not scale. So you actually end up having to scroll and it's quite difficult to operate because they don't scroll in kind of standard, in standard way. So it really does need a retina display or a 1080 kind of size display to get the most out of it. This is just a straight, Square wave. And it does actually sound quite beefy. Of course, I should add a bit of pulse width. Uh, I've got that dialed up here from this LFO. Pulse width is coming out, and I'm just going to dial in. This LFO has multi waves out, it goes up to about, I think it's about 80 hertz, something like that. And the basic waves actually do sound pretty good. If I now play a few more octaves. That's right up into audio rates. I think I'm just starting to hear a tiny bit of aliasing there, but actually not very much at all, which, you know, in terms of software is not bad. If I come to the screen here, the other thing, let's just try a sawtooth, bring that into the mixer instead. As you notice, when I'm scrolling over these, each module I roll over, the cables are sort of brighter and show you where they're going and the other ones are slightly duller. So it's actually much more easy to see where you are going in terms of uh, routing. So this is now a uh, sawtooth.
And again, you know, it sounds actually pretty good, but where you start to hear the kind of differences in modeling is when you get to the filter. So if I come to the filter here, this is again sawtooth. Just take a sweep. This is the 48 dB output, so it's a super filter. This filter's actually got bandpass 48, 24, 12, and 6 dB output. So you've got some nice kind of possibilities there. But if I start driving the audio harder into this, bring up a bit of emphasis. If I drop that down again. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just run uh, an LFO into here. And we'll take the level up. We can start to hear how that filter changes in character. And we can really drive it hard. If I take the uh, 24 dB, which is more of a familiar filter app, Drop the level down. You can hear the character of the filter changes enormously depending on how much signal you put into it. And you can really punch a lot of stuff in there and get these sort of really quite analog sounding driven sounds. And I'm guessing that's kind of where the detail is in terms of the, the way that uh, Softube have emulated these things. Because those are the sort of details that, you know, there is quite a lot of color in the differences between those gain levels into that filter. So and the thing is, is not only do you get that, but you also get audio rate modulation in this as well, which is something that not all synthesizers are capable of as software. So if I come to the panel here, I've got this VCO here, dual, uh, which I'm just running the triangle output, sorry, the sawtooth output into uh, the CV modulation input of the 110 VCO here. So if I bring this up, I've got quite a lot of audio rate modulation possibilities there. It's not, to, to my mind, it's not quite as crispy as the real hardware thing, but it certainly gives you plenty of tones and you start to filter them down and you get some really interesting things. I can also, I've got a square wave going into the filter here. Uh, uh, have I? Yeah, that's in CV3, sorry. So you can hear, you start to get that kind of yoy yoy sort of sound, which is something you can only do with audio make modulation depth into filters. And you know, me getting a little bit lost in the interface, this isn't a very complex patch, but it struck me as an idea. It would be kind of good if you could label the inputs on the modular. So for instance, here, I might be able to label this as uh, uh, FM depth and label this as uh, FM depth for the filter or envelope for the filter and FM depth. And that would be something that I think could greatly uh, enhance the ability to kind of decipher what the patches are. I know uh, certainly on the Moog System 15, uh, you've got these kind of tutorial modes which have these labels and what have you. And that could be something that I think something like this could really benefit from in terms of deciphering patches, particularly if you haven't built them yourself from scratch. Now, of course, you could actually just set up a control panel here by adding uh, one of these banks of, uh, of faders, say for instance, and then edit that and then name these custom values, but you can only control those sort of one-to-one. -one. That's not so good. So to do that, I would just say, let's just say, uh, add that to the filter, and then I, would I could name that separately here but as it's come up. Another thing that is actually more serious, I think, is it's not possible to just learn controller assignments in the interface. Like in, in a lot of other synths, you would right click here and you just say MIDI learn and wiggle your parameter and do that. You can't do that in here. You have to do it via automation or via in Logic, via MIDI learn or in Ableton Live, you do it via MIDI learn as well. I'd like to see just the ability to go, yes, I want to do that because it just means very quickly I can just go, oh, I want to tweak that parameter and you can't do that. And that is a bit of a shame. So let's take a listen to a couple more patches as well because uh, these are ones that I've built. And this is the thing. I mean, you can approach this in different ways. And what I quite like the idea of is you build yourself a kind of rack of equipment that you like and you just keep 
patching with that, rather than just keep adding and keep adding, you can create yourself a sort of small modular voice and create patches within that. Or you can create, go crazy and have a different one each time, but it comes with a whole bunch of patches. Let's take a listen to a few. So this one is a kind of deep square wave bass. And if we take a look at the screen here, I might just be able to uh, make that a bit bigger so you can see it. You can see that it's got a number of things happening. And one of those is this performance panel. And the way that that's uh, set up is we've assigned and you can name these parameters as well. So for instance, we can switch the filter types, which are all coming out of the filter which has got a pre preset switch, and then that's mapped to the select. So it's just basically selecting the different outputs of the filter. This one is the vibrato speed, so that's just controlling the speed of the LFO. And this is the vibrato depth. So that gives you a kind of insight into the sort of things that you can do with panels and some of the utility modules. Let's take a look at the CPU on this. That's Again, yeah, that's about half of one core on this. And of course, I can reduce that further by increasing the latency of the sound card, which means it's not having to work so hard in real time. In fact, on this particular project, let me see what I'm running this at. So yeah, I'm running this at 512 millis uh, samples latency. If I drop that down, say um, 64, see what that sounds, which is actually pretty low. See what that does to the CPU. You see the meter over here in the corner. Yeah, that starts to take it up to almost a core. So it is possible to reduce the impact that this has on the CPU just by kind of managing your, um, your CPU settings and your audio latency settings. Okay, so in this patch, we're utilizing a whole bunch of sequencing and clocking. I've got the DAW running, and we've got the clock coming out put here, and it's switching in time, which is in turn sending the clock to this sequence. Got performance panels changing the attack and the decay, but a kind of scaled version of that. We've got a little bit of reverb on this as well. We're using pentaphonic sequencer and two other sequencers. Uh, it's interesting to see what the CPU looks like on this actually. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's kind of starting to ask a little bit more of this. We've got a single VCO, but we've got a lot of utilities, a mixer, CV mixer, a signal tool, divider, and a lot of things going on. Here's another one. Again, I've got a little bit of reverb on this, but it's got a lovely, we've got two separate filters being modulated. It's a nice stereo sound. Again, we're using two of these Penta sequencers. Sounds like a bit of band pass going on. And this has got a pair of VCOs. Let's see what that's doing on the CPU. Not too much, actually. Oh, there it goes, a bit of a spike. Nice patch. In this patch, we've got more of a kind of sequence vibe going on. Look, no hands. And this again is clocking to the master DAW. And then we can switch rows on and off. So get rid of the bass drum, get rid of the snare drum, get rid of the kind of 16 hi hat part. Let's see what that's doing CPU wise. Yeah, it's kind of three quarters of a CPU. So in this patch, uh, it's the same as I opened the review with, and this was me sort of trying to recreate the sound of the uh, Pittsburgh SV1, uh, Lifeforms SV1, which I thought was a really nice patch. And it was also quite complex. So I figured that would be a good test for this. So what I've actually got here is uh, two VCOs. The first VCO is just drone note, which is not being affected by 
the pitch of the keyboard. Because what I've got is the sequence at eight, I'm using a single output step that I'm using to drive the pitch of uh, VCO, this VCO here. And then I'm also modulating the pulse width but I'm modulating it in sync with uh, the DAW tempo, which is basically coming from this door sync here on eighth notes. So it's just basically, and it's going a little bit too far, so it's getting that rhythmic kind of effect. Then I'm going into the IntelliGel called Gasmatron 2 filter, which is an emulation of the sort of MS style filter. It's a multi-mode filter, and it just sounds really nice. If I start to drive a bit of resonance in it, quite an interesting sound but it's got this Q drive which really starts to get it into really starts to get it into it depends how much I send into it just sounds really nice and then I've got a sub oscillator coming from a third VCO which is here which is being divided uh, from the frequency of this frequency here, which is just giving me a sub underneath. And then on the last channel, I've got the VCO up here, which is basically taking note tracking, and that's actually being played via the keyboard, so it's over the drone. This filter is really just nice and responsive. Getting those really nice organic tones. I've got the mapped on controllers here, which again is a bit of a pain actually. It's not the easiest way of doing it, and I'd like to see that change, but the sound of this is really nice. Then also on another, um, I've got Another bit of modulation, which is running at half the time of the pulse width rate. And what that is, is the clock out from quarter notes going into this ADSR, which is then in turn going into the FM2 of the, uh, that's the frequency modulation 2, sorry, of the uh, Corgasmatron 2. I've been very, uh, very disciplined, not put that much reverb on this, so you can just sort of hear. And the modelling of this filter is lovely. If I really crank the levels into it, it really just. Take that down a bit. Yeah, that sounds really nice to me and it shows the level of detail that they've modeled the IntelliGel stuff and it shows the kind of quality that they're aiming for and I think that's very encouraging. I mean, yes, there are a few downsides. I mean, I think the ability to learn controllers direct from the interface is kind of a must, particularly with something this complicated. Also be nice to have those performance panels to be able to control more than one parameter, though you can do it if you're doing some additional patching, but it starts to get quite complex. I mean, the main thing about this is really if you're thinking about getting into modular and you haven't got any of you know this kind of stuff this is still going to get you places that you you know you can go with that it's not the same tactile experience admittedly but it sounds really good to my ears and it some of these things I could try here and then I think, oh, actually, you know, I might try that in hardware on, on a module once I've got one because there are things that I can do here that I can sort of get a feel for modular stuff. Also, if you want the repeatability, that's another big thing. There are a few more features besides, uh, the first of which is uh, these auxiliary buses here. Uh, if I just zoom in a bit, we've got these additional four pairs of outputs that you can bus outputs to. So I could maybe take, say, uh, um, the output of an envelope 
and run that into an audition, uh, an additional auxiliary output, and then I could route that out to hardware. If I've got a DC coupled interface, that control voltage will speak through an uh, enabled audio output to some analog kit, and that's actually something that's quite powerful. Or I could just be bussing separate oscillators and have different level control or processing within the DAW, different effects or whatever. And that's quite a neat bussing system. There is also the ability to process external audio, or certainly DAW audio through it. I'll show you how that works now. So before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the pricing. Uh, modular Eurorack uh, is 99 bucks, which I think works at about 70 odd pounds, depending on what state the uh, pound is, which is not good at the moment. Uh, you can buy the additional modules, uh, U-Fold Wavefolding Madness, uh, 29 bucks, Rubicon, 49 bucks, and the Corgasmatron dual filter, which I really like, uh, 49 bucks. So it is a little bit extra. The one thing that you will need to uh, be aware of is it's iLock protection. I don't own an iLock, so I've just actually used iLock authorization, which is a bit of software you download to your computer and authorize the licenses, and then they'll become available. They won't be grayed out. You can also run the Heartbeat modules. If you own Heartbeat, you can access some of those individual uh, drum sounds as modules separately if you already own it. You can't buy them separately as far as I can tell. It has to be all or nothing. So I'm going to switch over to Reaper because of the patch I created uh, to show you the audio processing. Right, so here I'm running in Reaper. I've got a couple of drum buttons. I've also got a uh, modular patch which is doing the bass line. And then I'm bussing these tracks out to this bottom track here. And on this bottom track here, I've got quite a complex patch, and I've instantiated the modular effects plugin, which taking, gives me these additional inputs. And I've got quite a complex set of patches clocking from the DAW. I'm using the Corgasmatron filter and sample and hold on left and right. So if I now solo this, I've got, on one side, I've got this sample and hold, and on this side, I've got this kind of orgasmatron triggering envelope. That's on its own. So yes, you can process external audio from the DAW. I guess I could make that an external audio input and have it on a live input as well, uh, although I'd imagine it would start to eat into the CPU. But it does mean that you can do some quite interesting processing. There's auto pan modules, there's all sorts of things that you could do that would clock to the DAW. So it does allow quite a lot of creative processing from that point of view. Okay, well, I am actually quite a fan of this. Uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to make of it really because to be honest, you know, as I've said, hardware is more my kind of thing. But actually, it's really opened up a world in possibilities and it's been quite a difficult review to do because every time you start playing in modular, you enter this zone called modular time, which if those of you who've ever experienced that will know that time flies by and you haven't really achieved very much, but you've had great fun doing it. And I think that's the thing about the software. But on the plus side of this, you do that, you save it, you can get it back. You know? And for that sort of price, I think it's pretty clear that you know if you want to get into the idea of experimenting modular, go for it. Uh, if you're already got modular but you don't switch it on very often because you don't like the repeatability, then it might be something you could try. Obviously, it's not the only game in town. You've also got Native Instruments uh, Blocks, which is based on Reactor, which is a little bit more expensive. And you've also got the Pulsar Modular P900, which actually uh, does sound pretty nice. It's got some tasty effects built in as well. But overall, Quite a big fan of the SoftTube modular, and it's sort of thing that you might reach for more often than maybe the hassle of setting up your modular kit, unless you're one of those lucky people who've got a really nice big setup installation and you can just reach for it wherever you want. But then you've also got the problem is, if you've already got a patch set up, what do you do? Do you break it down or do you uh, leave it there? It depends, you know, it's, you have to have nerves of steel to work in pure modular world with no recall, that's for sure. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. That was SoftTube Modular. Please do subscribe for more. Uh, there's more coming soon. Uh, see you next time. Take care.